Hello lovely friends, thank you so much for being here today. We're playing around with some blooms today with the Shelley Art Bloom Technique. We've got three blooms for you and I'm using a UK recipe. It's the new Shelley Art recipe and I swapped one of the things in to see how it worked out. So I've got the base coat today. It's the Valspar Express Coat for interior walls. And that's pure brilliant white. I'm using the Jasonia varnish and the Good Home Deep Base. And this is the one I used to use. Um, but because I couldn't get the triple thick gloss varnish Jasonia, I started using the Good Home Interior Widow Metal with the regular Joss Sonia gloss varnish. The Good Home is a little thicker. You can get the Joss Sonia gloss varnish from the Joss Sonia's UK shop. So this is the cell activator I use today. And I just want to give a shout out to my lovely members, Travelling Tramps and Simply Nanette. You are so supportive and you mean the world. Thank you so much. Please check out their channels if you haven't already. So today we've got the Shelley Art Bloom Technique tutorial and I'm going to tell you everything that I learnt and how I went wrong and what I would do next. These are the colours today. I had one piggy and I had some really lovely colours from the works in the UK. So this is the pouring medium today and this is the consistency of the paints. You may have already picked up that the pillow paint has to be the thickest. The paints are a little thinner than the pillow paint and the cell activator is thinner still. So you can see the type of consistency I'm going for today to get these results. It's all about tweaking, experimenting and we're going to learn so much as we go along today. So I've got an iridescent paint here today as well, Pebio, this beautiful yellow green. And we've got the piggy mango. Have you tried pigments? I'd love to know what you're using at the moment. Okay, so my pink colour is the Dale Rowney from the range and this one is from B&Q. So this is my pillow paint for today. Nice and thick, not watered down at all. And this is my cell activator, Black Amsterdam with Floetrol Australian 2 to 1 ratio. So warning alert on bloom 1, 2 and 3, I put too much pillow paint down. And this has been a big learning for me. I tried this many, many months ago with the basic recipe and I had some good results, but I left it and went on to other things. So I'm now coming back. And if you know me at all, you know I love to experiment and learn new things. And now I've done the Shelley Art course, I'm really enjoying experimenting and learning so much more. So it's incredibly technical and hard technique. So we've got down today the red first of all and then the piggy pigment on top. You can see the real honey sort of consistency that you've got here. And then on top of that, I'm just layering the paints up and noticing how they sit nicely on the pillow paint. The pillow paint is, if you imagine, just something it needs to hold the rest of the paints on top of it and then you layer the paints on top. So I've got my permanent rose on top here, mixed with my pouring medium, which in my pouring medium, it's the Good Home Deep Base with a little bit of Jasonia. When I say a little bit, as you go along, you begin to see the consistency of the paint. You don't want too much because it then makes really melty cells. And I'm just learning at this point exactly what that means. Um, where if you have pigments, you disperse the Jasonia varnish into a paste and then you mix the pouring medium into it, but you don't want to use too much. And it's little by little is the way forward, I would definitely say. So I'm laying down that iridescent green there and the blue on top. This is a really strong color. And these are really, really dangerous colours to mix together. But I wanted to just try different paint colours, different palettes, things that I would never use before. Um, so not only am I using a new technique, but I'm using colour combinations that I haven't used as well. Now I must just say here, the cell activator is too much. I could have used half of that, especially as it's on a coaster. 
it's on a really small piece. I think sometimes it's almost harder doing a really small piece, but it's great to, to try out the technique. So I am blowing down and doing a circular blow, which means I'm just blowing out the cell activator and circular rotation just so it spreads out to where the rest of the paint is. And I'm doing that with one big breath. And as I come back, I'm beginning to re-blow and spread it a bit further. And I'm noticing that the cells are coming up in places, but they're coming out a bit more towards the end. And I'm, I'm realizing just how much paint I've got on here. Do you ever feel dizzy when you've done this blowout? I certainly was feeling quite lightheaded once I'd finished. So as I come to the end of blowing out this piece, the cells are popping up beautifully and the peacock cells are absolutely stunning. So I'm thinking there'd be nothing wrong with this at all. And I absolutely loved it. Um, really enjoyed this piece. My favorite one is actually num Bloom number three. Uh, I think the colour combination for me was lovely. But this one has got a really ethereal type finish. See, I'm putting even more pillow paint on the edge there. Um, it's because I'm so used to working with the sort of flip cup Dutch pour type uh, paints. I haven't used the Bloom Technique paints. I'm not very familiar with the consistency. It's so exciting getting to know it. So when I was listening to Shelley, she was saying that it's good to just let the pillow paint sit and it spreads out very gently. So that's how it looks now. And then I do the spinning to spread it right all over the coaster. And you can see at this point exactly how much pillow paint I have used. you see the cells popping out? I could have done that on a larger canvas, couldn't I? And can you see just how much cell activated there? Now what I was doing now was trying to just disturb, if you like, the middle bit, just to get it going. But I ended up ruining a lot of the cells by doing that because a lot of the cells that were on the outside, I've then blown on top of. So next time, that's definitely something to look at. Less cell activator, less pillow paint. And also, when I look back on this video, I thought, why did I get my palette knife out <laughs> and start drawing on it? But you'll see this at the end. I'll compare all three of them and you can tell me what you think. I actually really like the skins that have been left behind and I wish that I'd done this on a silicone sheet so I could put them to one side and then peel the skins off later for another textured piece. Apparently you can use the paint again, um, but because the pillar paint is such a different consistency to the paints, I'm gonna have to experiment with that and see how it works. But I have kept it in a different pot to reuse because I'm so used to reusing all of my paint. I filter it and reuse it and if it gets a bit too thick I tend to water it down whereas these paints you have to be really careful especially in the summer in the UK or you know the climate has got so much to do with the consistency and the skin forms on the paint so easily so there we are that's number one bloom it's my least favorite <laughs> how about you okay so blue number two again a little bit too much pillow paint but I'm using my red as the base again this time. And you'll notice, compare these two to the last one, I used a different color to put down first and it really did make a difference. So now we've got blue on top. These two are from the same company, Black and Crawford from the works. And this is Pebio, the greenish yellow. Beautiful iridescent paint. At the time that I bought this, Hobbycraft in the UK was having a discount sale. Definitely going to Hobbycraft, sign up. You get two pounds off here, two pounds off there. And you get a voucher for your birthday for five pounds and you also get 15% off. 
so um, you can also get your friends to sign up and have cards as well so um, laying down all the colours now right on top I've got my piggy mango and then a tiny bit more of that red for cheap paints which the black and Crawford are they are really good I love them so cell activator I did overkill again look at how much cell activators on there compared to the paints so I'm blowing again from the middle I was thinking no wonder I'll be able to blow it all out because there's so much of it so I'm blowing it out so it covers almost all the paints on the top layer not many cells are popping up yet but as I continue to blow and get a little bit more lightheaded um, I can see some little cells and these are actually coming out really gorgeously really rich colours it's almost like a molten lava type effect here so I'm looking back on the colour layering here and I'm really quite enjoying it, it's quite exciting. Can you see that red? It's very strong isn't it? I put two, put one thick layer of red down and another thin layer. So you just think about the, if you're trying to make a lava type picture, these colours go really well. It's interesting, I can't see much green coming through. So I'm pretty much done with the blowing and the cells have spread out nicely, really nicely. Can you see them? Look at those peacock cells there. Really beautiful, I really love that. Okay, so I couldn't resist getting my cocktail stick out and doing some swells at the end even though it was going to go completely off the case <laughs> um, but it was a lot of fun so i've got some little bit touch up with the pillow paint there and then i'm going to spin it out and just stretch the paint out a little bit more now this is actually one of my favorites at the end as well it looks like a rose so i'm spreading it out to the corner and then tilting it back to the center and then spreading it out to the other corner and bringing it back to the center just so it keeps its shape a bit better and I do it with the other corners but the other corners are pretty much spread it was just those two that I wanted to to spread out to keep the the red pretty much central now it's quite difficult to have red and green or pink and green in the same combo so I'm quite happy with that it dried quite nicely just really like remembering how different it is to the paints that I'm used to using in fluid art they move much more slowly and they hold their shape You've got to make sure that you do a drip test before you start so don't forget the pillow paint has to be the thickest the paints need to be the same consistency but thinner than the pillow paint and the cell activator is the thinnest of the three so this is just before i spun it out and here is the end result for that one what do you think now bloom number three i added a slightly different color layering this side this time and i started off with pink so i've got my permanent rose going down first that's a lovely dale Rowney paint it's very reasonably priced and you can get it in the range in the uk in the uk at the moment don't forget this is 2024 uh wilco is selling dale Rowney paints i'm in cornwall uk and I've just discovered them in there. I went in there last year and I didn't see any. And I went in this year and there are, they do have some. They've got iridescent paints as well in there. Um, so the next layer is the Black and Crawford Blue. Really simple acrylic paints, but I must admit the Daily Rowney, I've never, I've never found any fault with them. 
They're absolutely brilliant, really solid paint, as long as you've got a good quality pouring medium with them. So I've got iridescent, pebio, greenish yellow on top. I just marvel at how honey-like the consistency is. If you haven't if you haven't tried Shelley Art's course for for creating blooms, I really do recommend it. It's really really quite comprehensive, and the Facebook group is filled with ideas, and it's for every country in the world. Um, how wonderful! The community is amazing, and people are posting updates all the time on what they're using and what on what works. So blowing down and out. And I'm seeing the pink and green playing together, which is really quite exciting. Can you see there's a white hole in the middle? Um, that was where the layering wasn't this, wasn't thick enough. Can you see that beautiful violet colour coming through, though? With all the blues and the pinks. There's still too much cell activator. So I'm literally in the art room this week now. I'm going to be using this exact same recipe, but using less pillow paint, different layering of colours, and I'm going to use less cell activator. That's what I've learned from this. I think sometimes it's so easy just to post all of the paintings that you think look beautiful, and everything takes so much preparation. And I think it's really important every now and then to put a really good tutorial out there showing your mistakes and where you went wrong and what you'd learned from it because that's how I learn and I'll come back to this and I'll use it as a reference of what not to do um, or how to tweak. You know, I know we as artists can be very hard on ourselves too and some people have said this is beautiful um, but when you know the technique you know that you want to get it right and you want to be able to do it consistently and other than when the products change their recipes, you can get the same results once you practice and practice. I've had some wonderful tips from some of my fluid art friends. Thank you so much to Kim from Kim's Art Alchemy and to August from August Acrylic Art. You've really been so encouraging and I think you've done some amazing blooms, really have, and I really, really appreciate your tips when I've been saying, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? What's gone wrong here? What's gone wrong there? So yeah, thank you so much. Please check out their channels if you haven't already and give them a bit of love and support. You'll be really pleased you did. They've got some amazing paintings on their channels. So spilling this one out, can you see the pink that's come through? Oh, I love the pink and the green, the blue. So I'll definitely be trying that one again. Can you see again, a bit too much pillow paint, but look at the peacock cells that have really held. Very, very pleased with that. So as I spun this one out, I'm just tilting it a little bit more just to stretch the paint. And I'm marveling at how this paint stretches so well. So I'm just going to say at this point, what would you do differently? I'd like to ask you what colours you would like to see, what palette you'd like to see. Is there a particular layer of colours that you prefer? Do you want me to leave my cocktail stick out of it? <laughs> Whatever you're thinking, I love hearing your views. I'm learning here. I didn't use any piggy paints in this one and I know that I need to do some experimentation with piggies because every time I've used them so far they have created melty cells and I don't want to waste them. It's so easy to, to rush into things when you're trying a new technique especially one as technical as this so I'm just going stage by stage and trying not to rush it. just want to enjoy each painting and and share the knowledge as well so i just want to say at this point if you haven't if you're enjoying this video and you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing it's completely free and it really does help my channel it supports my videos and it's so encouraging hearing your thoughts and seeing new subscribers 
and I've got a Facebook page, Mary Louise Art. So if you want to connect with me there, I'm always doing some exciting things and I love this creative journey. I did a demo day recently and I'm doing some workshops in Cornwall. So if you're interested in that or having a one-to-one -one with me, please let me know. So that is number three, Bloom. And this is a little comparison here of the three blooms together. Looking back, I wish I had not used my cocktail stick and just allowed the cells to flow out because they were really lovely. So that's number one, number two, and number three in all its different forms. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you're having a good creative week and whatever you do, I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget that your art is a piece of you and it's a journey. I'm so lucky to be in this wonderful community of artists. We are all so supportive of each other. So have a good day. Keep in contact and don't forget to check out the Shelley Art course and her wonderful YouTube channel. Thank you for being here and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.